Patrick was raised in a loving yet disciplined Christian home environment. The parents taught by example the basic tenets of the Christian faith, love and reverence for God, the importance of family, respect for himself and his fellow men, and the dignity of honest labor. These qualities he displayed consistently throughout his life. During his childhood, Patrick worshipped with his parents and siblings at United Christian Cathedral, Lincoln Boulevard. Patrick began his education at Stephen DeLitt Primary and completed his secondary education at St. John's College. Patrick was brilliant, an exceptional student, and always in the top percentile of his class. He graduated from St. John's College in 1980 as valedictorian and began his career at the Central Bank of the Bahamas, where he worked in the Information Technology Department. He furthered his studies at the former College of the Bahamas, where he completed an Associates of Arts degree in banking with a concentration in computer data processing. Later, he took a leave of absence to attend Acadia College in Wolfville, Canada, where he obtained his bachelor's degree. Upon his return to Nassau, he continued his employment at the Central Bank and retired on April 30th, 2020, after 39 years of dedicated service. Patrick was a gentle spirit and jovial person with a generous heart. He cherished people and relationships and loved his family and friends deeply. He valued character over pedigree and looked for the good in each person and usually found it. He encouraged everyone to maximize their potential and reach for the stars. An unassuming, loyal soul, honesty and integrity were his hallmark. Patrick possessed a keen sense of self-worth and purpose and was very original in the way he did things. Always well-groomed, he was a debonair and loved the finer things in life. A particularly skilled and supple dancer, he was an avid lover of music and art with a vast collection of musical CDs over the years. He believed in living life to the fullest and was a socialite who always brought excitement to the family gatherings. Much to everyone's frustration, Patrick was always the last to arrive at any family function. However, when he arrived, you could be sure that there would be much laughter and joy. Patrick was family oriented and dedicated to his parents. Upon retiring, he took on more duties for them and insisted wherever he could. This included transporting them on their numerous doctor's visits. Despite having his own physical challenges, he was not one to complain, particularly about having to assist his father who required a wheelchair to aid his mobility. Over the years, Patrick was a dutiful uncle to his nieces and nephews. He assisted with the school pickups and his nieces and nephews attended many functions hosted by Central Bank. From an early age, Patrick exhibited a love for animals. At his death, Patrick owned five dogs, Bailey, Hunter, Lola II, Milo, and Roxy, who were near and dear to his heart. Patrick was predeceased by Colby and Lola Sr. Patrick was the first member of Rolling Hills community, having lived in the community for over 20 years. His neighbors characterized him as private and peaceful. Some 20 years ago, Patrick accepted an invitation from a friend to attend services at New Providence Community Church. He enjoyed the services and was comfortable with the mode of worship and visited repeatedly until he himself became a member. Patrick remained a faithful and supportive member of NCCP until his demise. In fact, 
when invited to church worship services by his family, his response was always, I can't miss my church. The messages received at NPCC had such an impact on Patrick that he was able to witness to and encourage others to faith in Jesus Christ. In August of 2023, Patrick made a renewed profession of the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and recommitted his life to God. His prayer life intensified, his faith deepened, and he maintained a consistent testimony of his faith in God. Nothing is constant or permanent in this world. Patrick left us suddenly, without warning. We, his family, are all devastated to lose such an amazing person so soon. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the homegoing service of Patrick Reed Hepburn. The word of God says that the Lord gives strength to his people and the Lord will bless his people with peace. And it's that peace that we pray over this family right now, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Paul puts it this way, to be absent in the body means that we are present with the Lord and, and happy in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And I believe we can give a round of applause for Patrick has gone home to glory. Thank you for clapping for me. I think we can clap better for that if this is for Patrick. If you knew him, you should be clapping and celebrating one time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is a home-going cer cer ceremony. This is a celebration. This is a as-I-knew-him section. And, and, you know, there was a movie called The, the Last Samurai, and in that movie, the king asked the question, tell me how this great warrior died. And the man responded, I would rather tell you how he lived. And so we came to tell you how Patrick lived among us. Amen? Amen. So, Father, we just bless you and we praise you. We thank you for this moment right now, God. Father, whereas we may not understand why, we know that he was in your hands all this time. And Father, so we thank you, God, for this gathering. We thank you for this celebration. Father, we just bless you right now. Father, we pray over this family right now and that your peace will surpass all understanding, God. Father, we just thank you, God, that even as they walk through this valley of shadow of death, you have kept your promise not to leave nor forsake them. And so, God, we just give you the praise. And God, at the end of this experience, may you get the honor and may you get the glory that you so rightly deserve that all God's people say. Amen. Come praise to him. Good morning. Let us stand and let us sing unto the Lord this morning. 1 Corinthians 13 and verses 9 into verses 12, it says, Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. Verse 12 says, Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror, but then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete, but then I will know everything completely, just as God knows me completely. I celebrate this morning because Patrick Hepburn now knows and sees completely. We're gonna sing a song, How Great Is Our God, and we sing that from a place of what we know now of who God is and how he moves in the earth. Patrick gets to sing that before his father, knowing fully how wonderful, how beautiful, how glorious his God is. So we're gonna sing this song together, and we're also gonna sing it as we're singing it with him and the angels, amen? 
Father, we love you in this place. We thank you that you are good, that you are holy, that you are worthy. We lift our voices, God, and even in our brokenness and even in our grief, God, we declare that you are great, Lord Jesus. The splendor of a king, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice.
Sing with me how, how great is our God. And oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Oh, our hearts will sing how great, how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And oh, we'll see how Greatest our God. Coming now with our first lesson will be Lakeisha Simonette, the niece of Patrick, and then this will be followed by a selection by the Bel Canto singers. Please come. Good morning. The scripture reading is taken from Wisdom chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be an affliction, and their going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of man they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good, because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love because grace and mercy are upon his elect, and he watches over his holy ones. Here ends the reading. Good morning, church. We, the members of Balcanto Singers, um, Patrick and I have been friends since we were teenagers, working downtown. And he's attended many of our performances, mostly as a patron at our gala events. We extend our deepest sympathies to all who love him. We will sing two numbers, Day and Night Praise and Psalm 8 by Richard Smallwood. Thank you. 
Let's just give them another round of applause. We bless them for honoring God with their voices. We're going to invite right now Kenrisha Major to come with our second reading, taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 through 58. We ask that everyone in the building stand besides the bereaved family for the reading of the second word. The second reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 through 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Here ends the reading. Coming now with a tribute will be the deputy governor uh, from the Central Bank, and this will be followed by the Central Bank Choir, and then, as I knew him by Michael Wiley, please come in that order. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Unfortunately, under these circumstances, but I will tell you, I have nothing but fond memories of Patrick, or P. Reed, as I called him. All the people in the IT department will tell you that I always had nicknames for them, and P. Reed was mine for him. So I first, I first met Patrick Reed Hebron in January 1989 upon entering the hollowed halls of the Central Bank. Patrick worked in the IT department, and the IT room was just adjacent to the banking department where I worked as a teller at the time. Patrick, Karen, Spacey, and Donna all occupied that space, and you couldn't help but be drawn to them. Patrick's infectious laughter echoed through the walls multiple times a day. Karen's glimmering smile always was a treat as I passed that room, and Spacey and Donna always found a way to make me laugh. Those were truly good days. Patrick was older than I, and obviously senior, but he was nothing but friendly and always happy to provide guidance to this new recruit. I was in awe of him sometimes, always impeccably dressed and always serious about how he presented himself and his work. He always made positive impressions. Eventually, IT outgrew the modest space in our banking and moved to the other side of the building, but Patrick and I remained in close contact working on a number of projects to modernize the bank's operations. Our respect and affinity for each other only grew stronger during this time. I was often amazed by what he could do, almost on demand sometimes, with a relational database and some macros. Patrick was a hard worker, 
but also knew how to unwind. Many a Friday evening found us either downtown or on cable beach checking out some of the hotspots after a long week. But more often than not, the conversations turned and remained focused on work. After all, that was probably his most favorite thing. So I was half saddened and half overjoyed four years ago when Patrick decided to take early retirement. Saddened because I knew that that meant things would change somewhat between us. This friend and mentor I had known and respected for more than 30 years was leaving. Saddened because I, it was a sobering reminder of how deeply the guard was changing at the central bank. But I was also overjoyed because I knew he had worked so hard for so many years and now deserved to live life on his own terms and have an opportunity to spend more time with his beloved dogs. There was no one like Patrick P. Reed to me, and no doubt there never will be. A sociable loner, hilarious but serious, he was an enigma and an open book. He was my colleague and my friend, at times my confidant, at times my mentor. He will be missed by the Central Bank family and his friends, but I am comforted in knowing that his memories will live on in us forever.
morning church morning my family morning pastors and ministers of this church morning to central bank morning to friends of Patrick Reed Hebron better known as my Patrick turn to your neighbor and say i am here cuz i love be some patrick I am here cuz I love me some Patrick. Ah, uh, this this plenty pages but you know it's right big so don't worry about that. Hey girl, you important eh? Why does father strong always want to see you every day? I looked up and there standing in front of me was one small teenage head little boy. and i said to myself self should i slap him or just let him live to see another day that was my first introduction to patrick reed hebron my patrick our lives took opposite directions but i was older than him i went to college he went um to work in the central bank one evening when i returned home from work I was greeted by loud music and laughter. They're visiting my parents home and my daddy departed by the pool with two young men. One was late to introduce us Joe Taylor and lo and behold the pinned head little boy had grown up to be a fine young man. Our friendship was rekindled and remained until his demise. My father was employed at Central Bank but I wouldn't go on I wouldn't talk about that anymore because your representative did such an awesome job but you made up you missed out one important part if you knew my Patrick Patrick was always late <laughs> oh lord and this is how you all know what I'm talking about this is how we would justify it Mikey I reach late but I, I don't go home early he stay late so he had some weird sense of balance i could never understand that when it came to patrick's inner circle it was just limited to a handful of persons he and i were quite similar we know the world but we don't keep company anita harris spacey eldris jack joe steven peter desmond just to name a few some of you all will hear I can name you all cuz you all want be anonymous <laughs> oh, because of my Patrick's success at Central Bank he wanted a home and a car it was his financial guru spacey who advised who advised him on these important purchases he always told me how grateful and thankful he was to her as a matter of fact anything and everything involving finances he turned to spacey but you got one god to uh, but i know about a uh, spacey son bj my patrick traveled the world you could hear me yes. okay my patrick traveled the world extensively and thoroughly enjoyed his bougie lifestyle one filled with wine fine dining and song My Patrick loved all genres of music, jazz, gospel, reggae, reggae, reggae R&B, house music, etc. All topped off with a bottle of red wine that he had later swapped out for Johnny Walker Black. Loyal and faithful, that was my Patrick. My Patrick family was everything to him. He loved his siblings and their families and honored his parents. I don't know if he told you all this. He was so grateful. With the brothers who lived at home with his parents he said my key now something may fall on my eye but i think it's the makeup <laughs> he said my key i i get go to i can go to bed and rest comfortably at night no when i have to worry if no one can break in their home or anything somebody was always there with him he loved his sisters nine i told him and my friend i know sometimes you all felt like He was strange he was strange but that was his way please understand me when i tell me tell you all he love all he all my patrick 
No, sometimes he felt he was misunderstood. I spent days, weeks, months trying to assure him that he was deeply loved and appreciated. My Patrick life became quite routine. Crystal Palace gym, work, and whatever social arts work was her copy, Patrick was there. Fast forward within the last 20 years, my Patrick's priorities changed. He still partied, but this time it was different. Intimate dinner parties and small gatherings were now the order of the day. Me cooking my famous crab and rice, <coughs> fried snap or cold snow was always in demand. We went to fish fry for lunch or Sunday brunches at Cafe Martinique, Ricardo, Ocean Club seasons, and people change as we press forward. My Patrick had a strong desire to be married and to have children. This conversation always came up as recently as June 23rd. I listed all of his wonderful qualities that he possessed, to have a great partner, and to love all the love he could give to any child. He had so much love. I was sometimes bewildered about this particular desire because he never went out to even meet anybody, and if he did go out, he was out with me, so I didn't understand that. I have spoken about Patrick's party life. Now, I really like you about his spiritual life. Over the decades, my Patrick attended a few churches. He was raised in a very good church with his family, but he still was seeking. I remember quite vividly the first time he visited this church. He called me full of excitement and said, Michael, I fired my hiding place, my walk. We always compared our praise teams, you see? I, den I attend the Church of the Paris most, Holy Trinity, and we have the best praise team ever. Well, he differed. He enjoyed the warmth and the love that this congregation and its ministers showed towards him. I would like to say thank you for being so loving towards him, for embracing him, and showing him the true meaning of the word love, not shunning, not judging, just loving. Um, Pastor, you talk about things being in tune. When the young lady came up and referenced 1 Corinthians 13, his favorite was 4 and 8. Love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy or boast. It, it is not arrogant or rude. Love bears all things, believe all things, hope all things, endure all things. Love never ends. My Patrick hardly ever invited anyone to his home. Now, family, you know I know what I'm talking about. He'll come to you, you'll be having a function. And Ellie reminded me of this this week. You will have a function. Patrick will bring anything except cooked food. Anything he ain't cooking. He will come, and when I call and tell him, I am driving down to Rolling Hills, he just suck and deep, suck his seat because he knew I was coming. What's going on now, currently in the US of A, this election, uh, Patrick would have had my phone ringing off. He was fascinated by President Trump and wondered every day what else was going to come out of his mouth. <laughs> He would be interested now that things have changed and how Miss um, Kamala Harris is running. On June 23rd, I supposed to go here and there, we will. On June 23rd, my Patrick and I were just shooting the breeze, talking about this, talking about that, what we normally do. But his tone changed. He said, Mike, if I were to die before you, you know that you would have to speak at my service. I became quite annoyed because we've often spoken about death, but church this time was different. I said, will you speak to mine if I died first? He didn't even hesitate. No. <laughs> Someone else would have to do it. He asked again, and I proceeded to talk about our amazing, crazy, mind-blowing friendship. He replied, you know me better than most, and thank you for being so honest. Pastor, family, friends, who knew? God knew 
It is so important to tell people you love them and thank them for their love. Oh. I know if you're trying to cap me off, but I got to do this. From 2017, I noticed a profound change in my Patrick. He became withdrawn and extremely quiet. I asked in my, big, in my biggity way, my Patrick, what's happening? What's going on? He spoke about wanting a family. I reiterated to him, he had his family, his church family, my family. They somehow never seemed adequate. This dark love became more and more clearing during the time of COVID when he experienced a profound sense of loneliness. I prayed with him constantly and made jokes in true drama queen fashion just to put a smile on his face. I even encouraged him to open a business to occupy his thoughts and his time. Now you all know how that would have to go. I would have to go open it and he coming on three o'clock. <laughs> <sighs> However, I soon realized as a friend and a confidant, some things were beyond my capabilities and encouraged him to seek professional help. Nevertheless, until his demise, I constantly availed myself with every whim and call. Whether it was me cooking for us the fellowship, even though I hate cooking, or talking on the phone for hours, especially when I wanted to sleep. But that's what friends do. When God has ordained you to be the armor bearer for your friends, there's nothing you could do through the good, the bad, and the ugly. The last three years have been filled with highs and lows. The highs being the marriages of his nephew and my son and our epic birthday celebration. The lows being his constant struggle with the unfitness of life. Oh, pastor, congregation, my bereaved family, let me tell you all about signs and wonders. This is how I keep friends. We never borrow money, we never lend out money to each other. That's how I keep my friends. We exchange gifts, but nothing extravagant. We do. If he like a cologne or he want a shirt or something from Amazon, I'll get it. This year, Patrick gave me an extravagant gift. Now we had 17 years to process, so now things are, you know, coming, coming. I always, I also made plans for us to take a vacation after my vacation next month. And he tell me, hmm. Well, I normally keep up my Christmas tree until it's our birthday. And this year I kept it up until March. And every time he came to me, he came inside my home. I was wondering, what are you coming inside for? You only come in to drop off food or something. You don't have to come inside. But now, now, now everybody knows. Oh, oh, did I state that we share the same birthday? February 16th, best day of the year, best day. Everybody know when it comes to my birthday, it's a big celebration and it's on my birthday. I don't care what day of the week it falls, it's a birthday. This year, Patrick requested of me, he said, Mikey, just let me, you, my son, and my son-in-law go to dinner on our actual birthday. I I'm happy I obliged now that this has happened and we celebrated a few days later. There was a commercial that came out some years ago where a tattoo artist gave a tattoo, a gave a tattoo. Upon completion, the tattoo read boldly, no regrets, instead of no regrets. That was our favorite commercial. And from that day on, regrets became our special word. My last conversation with Patrick was July 2nd, and it went like this. You just make me so sick. <laughs> the last time I checked, the device that Alexander Graham Bell invented worked both ways. Why do I always have to call you? Why? Why? What kind of friendship this is? One-sided, one-sided. What's happening, bro? He said, I right here. 
And then he gave his usual silly laugh. I told him, we'll link and do something to celebrate independence. He said, okay, no regrets. Now, oh, my next piece of paper. <laughs> And this is the main one. Yeah, we ain't do the main here. Yeah. This is the main one. Okay. I got to add lip this because my son, I don't know, he put my paper. <laughs> Let me give honor and respect to the real loves of Patrick life. Those dogs, those six dogs. I couldn't stand them dogs. <laughs> Especially that white one. Patrick told me a no joke. The minute he turned his vehicle through my corner, that dog is just sad, growling and carrying on. And when he saw me, he went crazy. Now, when it came to giving out the dogs, I spoke with his sister, and I said, um, make sure who get these dogs. No, these are not ordinary dogs. These are boozy dogs. Central air, all day, every day. They may come out to go to the car in more air condition. They don't eat scrap meat. They definitely don't go outside. Those were his children, and he loved them dearly. Okay. Now, I saw a finish, Pastor. When you die, God isn't going to ask you about someone else. He won't ask you about the two men down the road who got married. He won't ask you about the girl who had an abortion. He won't ask you about the atheist that lives on the corner. He won't ask you about the woman who feels more comfortable as a man. He will ask you how you love the people. He called you to do so. I wish to thank the following persons on behalf of my Patrick. Mr. and Mrs. Hepburn, his siblings, his family, thank God for bringing him into this world so he was able to share my life. The church and its members, I can't thank you all enough. If you all could only guess at the impact you all had on Patrick's life. The Rolling Hills community for embracing my Patrick as much as you are allowed to. And they here, they know, they, they know what I'm talking about for your concern and actions in the end. Thanks to everyone who loved my Patrick. Spacey, Nita, Eldridge, Desmond, Peter, Joe, Jack, Stephen, all of us, we have to celebrate his life with no regrets. Don't cry for me, Argentina. Thank you so much. Now that's and as I knew him. Jeez. I'm going to give her my name so when I pass, we'll be straight. You all come back. Okay. Coming, coming now will be a, we will have a musical tribute by Patience Roll and this will be, then be followed by a video tribute by the Hepburn family. To hope that the song I'm about to sing comforts the Berea family in some way or form. As I lay me down, heaven hear me now. I'm lost without a cause. After giving it my all Winter storms have come And darken my sun After all that I've been through 
who on earth can I turn to? I look to you. After all my strength is gone In you I can be strong I look to you Thessalonians 5 and 18. 18. In all things give God thanks, for this is the will of God. I have always given God thanks for keeping our family safe, and I always knew that we were blessed. Blessed to still have our parents at 92 and 84 years of age. Blessed that all eight children, 15 grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren were all alive and in fair health. Today, we thank God for lending Patrick to us for 60 years, 4 months, and 21 days. We thank God for his life and ministry. We thank God for the seeds that he has sown and the lives that he has touched. 
Pat was the calm, generous peacemaker among us. He loved his family and always displayed a giving heart. He always saw the good in everyone. The difficult part about our loss is that we did not get to say goodbye to him. If I had known the last time I saw Patrick would have been our final meeting, I would have held him tight. I would have told him how much I loved and appreciated him. This is our family's first loss, and it is very painful. But through it all, we will continue to lean on God's strength and to trust him to see us through this journey. Our comfort is in knowing we will see Patrick again if we too remain faithful to our Creator. Until then, we will remember his quiet smile and cherish the fond memories. We love and miss you, Pat. First Thessalonians 5 and 18 There is a word for this moment. Coming to bring that word will be pastor at NPCC, Pastor Tyrone Ferguson. 
He wants you to listen attentively to what he has to say. But just before he comes, we invite Stephen Robinson to come with his musical selection. Good afternoon. Before I play, I just want to say my condolences to your family um, and put my stamp of approval on as I knew him by Michael. Uh, Patrick was more than just a friend. We live like brothers. And what's so crazy, a lot of folks thought we were brothers. In just about every room we would have been in, folks took us for brothers. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm taller. I could remember many calls from Patrick. Stephen, why are these people taking me for you? Especially when he would have gone to the eye doctor where my sister works. She would call me and say, I just met Patrick Reed Hebburn. I was like, okay, I know you mean. And then most recently, someone called me up and said, I met your brother. I was like, no, I know you're speaking of. He's not my brother, but that is my good friend. My last conversation with Patrick was a few months ago when I relocated once again. I said, Patrick, I'm signing on to another contract outside of Nassau. Patrick said to me, when you come back, tell me about all of the great things that you will be doing. And Unfortunately, I'm here. I didn't get the chance to tell him about my new adventure, but I'm gonna play this song in honor of Patrick.
afternoon. Man. What a service. What a service. There's a scripture that says, and the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. I'm feeling that cloud in this place today. I want to further extend the condolences, the love, the best wishes you had. I want to just say that Patrick's family here at NPCC are with you every step of the way. I've had the opportunity to sit with Patrick's family, Patrick's immediate family, and something began to happen. I believe God is doing something. And uh, just want you to know, uh, this part of this conversation is not scripted. The Central Bank Choir. I had the opportunity to sit with the Central Bank Choir about a month ago, and Patrick was there. The Central Bank's choir, they sang to the unveiling of a sculpture. Have I looked familiar to you? Yeah, the sculpture. <laughs> That's my sculpture, uh, the, the first sculpture in the Central Bank's sculpture garden. Tyrone Ferguson, the artist. <laughs> Tyrone Ferguson, the pastor. I'm going somewhere with this. God has brought such a diverse section and sections of community to this place today. Patrick's energy has created such a community spirit in this place today. So, this is new. This is brand new. I just got this sitting there. You need to make sure we have all of your contacts. Central Bank Choir, you're going to have to come back here again because next year we'll be unveiling a sculpture in Patrick's memory here in our sculpture garden. <laughs> Family, whatever you do, you're going to have to save some of the ash for us, for this community. Patrick was here with us for at least 20 years. This is Patrick's home. I'm inviting all of you. You'll get the date when we will be unveiling this sculpture. And I'm going to tell you right now, and the Lord gave all of this to me sitting right there. I'm going to tell you the name of the sculpture. You know, I sat there thinking about life. And uh, my topic today really was supposed to be the space between. You look at the program and you see, you see 1964 to 2024. But there's a little space between. If you look at anyone's passing, if you look at any program, it would be that same space between, a little dash, a space between. Our lives are lived in the space between. If you were to visit the graveyard, you would see 
here lies so and so, born so and so, born such and such a time, died such and such a time, but there's that space between we are here today. We are here today because of the life Patrick lived in that space between. I'm going to read a scripture to you, and then I will tell you briefly about that space between for Patrick. We all know the scripture, Ecclesiastes 3, 2 through 8. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search, and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. I want you to know it is my distinct pleasure and privilege to take part in this occasion that honors the life of our dear friend, Patrick. And yes, to say that we are shocked and devastated by the news of his sudden passing would be an understatement. It feels as though a storm has swept through our lives and all that's left are these memories we cherish. Yeah, there's a time to be born and a time to die. For all of us, our journey here will be defined by the space between, that space between our birth and our death, here today and gone tomorrow. We make our entrance with a deep breath and we exit with one last exhale. Our short time on earth, our short time is lived in that dash, that space between now and eternity. An old school bus driver tells the story of this little boy who got off the bus each day and he walked through the gates at the cemetery. So one day he asks this little boy, why do you go into the cemetery every day. The little boy said, I live on the other side. That's the only way I'm able to get home by walking through there. I'm saying to you, saints, I'm saying to you, citizens, we need to always remember that our home is on the other side. Debt. Sometimes I feel sorry for debt. Debt is like an elevator operator. Debt doesn't call the shot. He just pushes the button. If God says up, it's up. If it's down, it's down. He's chained to that elevator. That's why the scripture says debt is the last to be used for this earth. 
that as a job. We just must remember that we are all graveyard travelers, that our time on this earth has a built-in expiry date, and the clock started ticking when we were born on this earth. The only way we can get out of it is by not being born on this earth. The story is told of this man who had this vivid dream when he went to bed early one night. He dreamt that death was coming for him at a certain time, and he got up in a sweat and got into his boat and went to the furthest island that he could go to. When he got off the boat and began walking on shore, he saw death coming towards him all over again. So he dashes back on his boat, goes back home, and goes back to bed and said, it must be was just a very bad dream and not the vision that I thought it was. Upon that appointed time, death shook him up. And he said, just tell me one thing before you take me. Just answer one question for me. And that said, yes, I'll answer one question for you. He asked that, why did you look so shocked when you saw me on that island? That said, because I knew I was supposed to meet you home in bed. <laughs> what were you doing? There. That is a one-time act. It cannot be repeated. You can't do it over again. You can cancel your appointment with your doctor, your mechanic, the salon. But that, no. There are some things in that space between, that space between life and death we can do over and over until we get it right. There are some experiences that occur often. And if we messed it up the first time, we can go and do it all over again. But that, that is an experience that can never be repeated. We can't practice dying, but we can prepare for our death by living a life of purpose in the space between. Patrick lived a life that was vibrant, purposeful. He was overwhelmingly generous. Yeah, Patrick's sudden departure leaves behind an echoing void punctuated by our memories and the lingering sweetness of his spirit. One thing I will never forget about Patrick is that he would always have a word of encouragement for me. Patrick was the only person I know who could find a different set of words to encourage me every time we met. He was a confident, constant source of encouragement. Patrick was a person whose smile alone could light up the dimmest of rooms with every unguarded laugh, with every candid word, even by the way he dressed. Patrick painted our ordinary days with extraordinary colors. Yes, news of Patrick's passing was a bitter pill to swallow or hearts grapple with the reality that the sun has set on a life that felt more like a sunrise but let it serve as a stark reminder of the fragility of our existence. And the abrupt way our final chapter can be written without warning, without pattern, without permission. As I gathered my thoughts around what I was going to say today, I thought about the last time I saw Patrick. It was on Sunday, June 30th. I could remember where Patrick was sitting, and I know sometimes I'm going to be looking right over there. Third row, little to the left. The irony is on that Sunday, 
we had a celebration in here and we had tables in the room, but Patrick was sitting in that same area. Patrick seemed to have gravitated to that area. When a preacher is preaching, a preacher needs sometimes what you call like a sweet spot, like somewhere he can look, where he can like get an assurance, like if he feels he isn't getting the feedback, look over there at Patrick and Patrick is nodding. Patrick is nodding and I know what Patrick is saying. If Patrick could be here today, I thought about what he would want to say to me. You have what it takes, Pastor Ty. And these are things Patrick would have said to me after a service. Every time I'm finished speaking, Patrick is one of those persons who would wait until everybody have had their handshakes and their words. And Patrick would want to look into my eyes and say, you were awesome today, Pastor Ty. Keep up the good work. I needed that word today. I always get something out of what you say. I remember him saying, I'm going through a rough space right now, but I'm going to be okay. That word really spoke to the very space I'm in. If Patrick <laughs> would want to say something to me to say to you today, if he would speak to you today, Patrick would say, tell them, don't go down. Because if you go down, you'll miss me. I'm up here waiting for you. Tell them that I'll be standing at the eastern gate. Yes, I'll be wearing a blue suit, a pink shirt, and a burgundy tie. <laughs> Tell them, look for my biggest smile. I love every one of you. And I thank God to have been able to spend the time that he gave me to spend with you. But remember, only what you do for Christ will last. Be strong, because it may not be long. So through Patrick's passing, let us remember to grasp tightly to the present. For it is all that we truly own, and it may not be long. Maybe if each of us were to commit to encouraging one person each day as we live in the space between, we could keep Patrick's presence here with us. Let us leave here today embracing life in a way that would make Patrick proud. Let us make a commitment to be more kind, Love harder, laugh louder. Wouldn't that be cool if we could just honor Patrick's memory in that way? Just maybe, just maybe we could start. <laughs> Some of this came to me, I mean, like here, so, but maybe it was always there. Because I'm thinking now, we're going to start a day at this church called the National Day of Encouragement in memory of Patrick, because Patrick was an encourager. <laughs> what I'm saying to you is the name of that sculpture that I'm making is going to be the encourager. Thanks for clapping, and, and thanks for already committing in your heart to come to the unveiling of that sculpture. I know this is hard. I know to do this is hard, but I would want you to remember, Patrick is gone, but not gone. His presence will always be here with us. I know I'm going to always be looking over there. 
I know I'm going to still be meeting Patrick in the corridor. Remember, only what's done for Christ will last. I know we've been here for a while, but I want to pray with you. I want this community to pray with you. Join me in prayer, please. Dear God, we humbly come before you today to seek your strength and comfort. For Patrick family, yes, but for this whole community, Lord, I ask that you wrap your loving arms around his family and around all of us, Lord. Provide us with that peace that surpasses all understanding. May your presence be felt in our hearts, Lord. Bring solace and healing to our deepest sorrow. Lord, I pray that you would grant us the strength to endure this season of loss and guide us through the process of grief with your tender care. Lord, we just ask that you fill our minds with your promises of hope and eternal life. Remind us continually, Lord, that Patrick is now resting peacefully in your heavenly kingdom. Help us to lean on your everlasting arm for comfort and to find strength in your comforting words. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayer, Lord. Thank you for continuing to be a source of strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I'm going to ask you to do something else before we do the benediction. I'm going to ask you to pause for a moment of silence. And as you pause, think about one word that you can use to put in that dash to describe Patrick. I gave you my one word, encourager. That's the word I'm going to take with me, encourager. Think about a word that you want to take with you and you want this word to pop up into your spirit every time you think about Patrick. Doing what I did here was just so different for me today because by the time as I came up here, I've already... It's like I just heard a lifetime of Patrick from his family, from his peeps who I've never met. And now you get to meet some of Patrick's peeps here at New Providence Community Church today. I'm going to ask you, except for the bereaved family, to stand for the benediction. And I do believe that Patrick's neighbors would want you to stop on the porch for a brief moment, for a brief little fellowship with them, just to just give you a glimpse of how Patrick lived with his neighbors. Lord, bless us and keep us. Lord, make your face shine upon us. Be gracious unto us. Lord, let your countenance fall fresh upon us that we may carry your peace with us this day, tonight, and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.
I'm going to ask you to please allow the family to make their exit so they can meet you on the porch as you leave. Thank you.